Thank you very much, Stacey, and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Hope you're all enjoying the Alliance meeting so far. Nice to have so many people online. Um, so today we have a 45, 40 minute session um, on a topic that's close to, I think everyone's heart because everybody either has a parent or a caregiver and some of us are parents or caregivers. So it's something that many of us actually understand. And just before we dive into the structure of the session, I'd like to ask everybody just to put into the chat the name of your parent, your mother, your father. It can also be a caregiver, an uncle. Just one second to ground yourself into this session, put the name of the person that's cared for you as a child. You can also put two people. Mother Camilla, that's nice. You can also put names if you want. First names or, or what you call them. Arwin, Rowan, Francois, nice. Monique and Marc. Kai Santapani, what a lovely name. Mary, thank you all. Um, so today we're going to be presenting a new tool that the Family Strengthening Task Force has been working on, or actually has refreshed over the past years, and we'll be presenting that. Um, or maybe I should start by introducing myself, sorry. My name is Sabine Rakotomalala, and I'm with the World Health Organization. But I'm actually here as one of the co-leads of the Family Strengthening Task Force, along with Sarah from Save the Children and Marianne from War Child Lebanon. Um, actually, Work Child Netherlands based in Lebanon, and they should also be online. Um, the Family Strengthening Task Force is made up of a whole bunch of organizations, including International Rescue Committee, International Federation of the Red Cross, PLAN, ACF, TDH, and many, many more. And we actually hope that more people will join the Family Strengthening Task Force. <clears throat> so please feel free to reach out to us after this session. Um, so I'm going to give a very short presentation on the compendium just five minutes. Then we have a short moment for questions on the compendium. And then we have Issa, uh, um, Issa sorry, Issan presenting and uh, Tagreed presenting on uh, their work. So Tagreed is, will be presenting first. She's with War Child, uh, with uh, IRC in Lebanon. Sorry, it's, I'm in Bogota, it's very early here. <laughs> so Tagreed will be presenting from, um, uh, war, uh, IRC in Lebanon, and then uh, Isang will be presenting on work that they have been doing with Parenting for Lifelong Health in Humanitarian Settings. And then we have some more time for questions and, um, and interventions. So we're really curious to hear from you all um, about the work you're doing on family strengthening. So um, if we can just share the slides, please. I'll just jump into a short presentation of the compendium. Stacy. I don't see the slides. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, no, the other, the first slides, please. So maybe I'll just, yeah, there you go. Thank you very much. So um, as mentioned, this work was originally started in 2017 when the Family Strengthening Task Force was first set up. And that's when the first mapping was conducted by uh, consultants. And today we're presenting the new updated version five years later, which includes a whole bunch of new existing resources. We also uh, opened up to include uh, other outcomes than just child protection outcomes. So looking at family strengthening for outcomes relating, for example, to early childhood development, um, uptake uh, in education through the education sector, um, mental health of parents, mental health of children, and then of course the child protection work as well as nutrition, by the way. So we have a whole bunch of uh, additional resources that we've included. Next slide, please. Um, we've uh, consulted a whole number of stakeholders over the past three years, INGOs, national NGOs, UN agencies, also governments, um, all stakeholders working in the child protection field or with the child protection field from the mental health perspective or the nutrition perspective or the education perspective. And we really looked for open source materials and that are available online at no cost, because at the end of the day, our role is to support you as uh, child protection coordinators or child protection practitioners to be able to implement um, parenting support or family support programs. Next slide. So, um, 
in the beginning, we just thought we would include only interventions, but as we came across so many other tools, um, we decided to go a little bit larger. So we've included campaigns, evaluation tools, reviews of evidence, and also tools that are approaches. So for example, the Amani campaign, which many of you surely know from uh, Jordan, which was an IRC led with a whole bunch of other organizations, including UNHCR, but also approaches like the MH gap, which is the mental health gap, um, uh, which is more of an approach than a tool, um, but still the majority of the of the uh, of the tools presented in the compendium are actually interventions. Next slide. Um, as I mentioned, it covers multiple sectors, including nutrition, mental health, psychosocial support, education, also gender-based violence, and child protection. And when I talk about mental health, it's mental health of parents, so caring for caregivers, also mental health of children, and mental health of adolescents. Next slide. So this gives a short overview of, um, and we'll pop into the slide, the actual tool so you can look into it. But basically of what we found, we found 58 key resources, three of which are training materials, six are approaches, five are very simple guides for parents, in fact, to use directly, and 36 are interventions. Again, these are open source interventions with guides, with core modules. In fact, they're very similar. Um, spoiler alert, a lot of the content is very similar across the different agencies guides, um, which is very reassuring as well. Um, but you will see that every um, tool has uh, the name of the tool with a, a, a direct link to it. And then it has the uh, organization that uh, published it, the language in which it exists, the outcomes for which, uh, which it serves, and then whether there's evidence or no evidence. And the tool is also set up in a way that it's an Excel file, so you can sort to find what you need, either by agency or by outcome. Um, but then it's also a PDF, so you can print it out and look into it. Next slide. So this is where the full compendium can be accessed. Um, and I just want to re reiterate one important thing. Um, over the past, I would say, three or four years, we've really seen a huge uh, increase of the evidence base available for parent support interventions. Um, as of 2021, there were over 400 randomized controlled trials from 65 low, middle, and high income countries. And in fact, 18 of these showed intervention effectiveness in humanitarian settings. So whereas 10 years ago, we often heard that oh, we can't do family or parenting support in a humanitarian setting, and we'll hear from Tagreed and Isang just now, um, it is possible in humanitarian settings. And in fact, it really works. And it also works for different age groups. So for younger children and for older children, and for different outcomes, including mental health outcomes, child protection outcomes, nutritional outcomes, and GBV outcomes. So um, I'll just leave a, a couple of minutes for questions at this point, and then I'll hand over to Tagreed. I don't know if there's questions. You can either pop them into the chat or you can just put your mic on and speak. Um, and if we don't hear any, then we will move on to Tagreed. If you have a question, please raise your hand um, before bringing your mic and we'll bring you into the questions or put them into the chat, please. No questions. Tagreed, are you ready to go? Yeah, we'll share the link. Um, we it's, it's on the slide right here, but then we'll also share it into the chat. Over to you, Tagreed. Thank you. So um, I am Tagreed, the Child Protection Coordinator, uh, Head of Unit at the IRC Lebanon. I will present today's uh, uh, Parenting Skills Curriculum of uh, IRC, which is uh, Family uh, Makes the Difference. Um, next slide, please. So IRC Families Makes uh, the Difference uh, is a, um, I need the content. <laughs> Stacy, uh, I need the slide, yes. So uh, Family Makes the Difference is a research-based intervention developed by IRC that aims to promote uh, the well-being of children and adolescents through improving uh, parenting stress uh, management skills, positive parenting practices, and the strategy for supporting children and adolescents with psychosocial needs. Um, next, Stacey. Uh, the Family Makes Difference uh, tools has been developed based on uh, more than three research of the effectiveness of parent training program. Mm. Uh, 
And since 2009, IRC has implemented the uh, curricula uh, in 2020, uh, 2022 countries in Africa, Latin America, Middle East, uh, Europe, and uh, reached over than 3,000 families. Next slide. So yes, so for the parenting sessions uh, as IRC, we have uh, three main curricula for FMD. We have uh, one for the caregivers of the children who are from zero to five, uh, one for the caregivers of the children who are from six to 11, and one, one for the children who are from, uh, uh, for the caregivers, sorry, of the children who are from 12 to, seven, to 17. Uh, each curriculum is uh, composed from 10 to 13 sessions, including five core competencies. Uh, each session is from two hours, uh, conducted, conducted in a group um, format. Uh, each uh, group uh, should be not more than 10 to 12 uh, parents. Uh, it's a support group, and we are using uh, mainly the dialogue, listening skills, and uh, small group work. Uh, from time to time, we are doing uh, home visit and individual coaching sessions at least one time uh, for each parent to see how they are implementing their uh, parenting sessions uh, inside homes. Next slide. Uh, yes, as I mentioned before, we have um, three curriculums or uh, three uh, types of uh, FMG curriculums, one for the 0 to 5, 6 to 11, and uh, the other one for adolescent, it's 12 to 17. Uh, the core models are for brain development, uh, empathy and communication, positive interaction and discipline for uh, the children and adolescents. Next slide. Uh, next slide, please. What are our achievements at IRC Lebanon? Uh, so at IRC Lebanon, we are conducting and doing trainings for all the agencies in Lebanon who are uh, leading and who are dealing with parents for, uh, and for with children. Uh, our curriculum were, were adapted based on the needs respecting the, uh, the culture's view, especially for the FMD of the 1217. We adapted based on the context and on the um, uh, culture here in Lebanon. And we did some adaptation to uh, be held remotely during COVID-19. Uh, the FMD is, uh, we, we are dealing with behavior and change, uh, were observed on caregivers by the end of the cycles. And the caregivers having children targeted of, for case management services were engaged in parenting skills sessions as a part of the case management action plan. We see improvement of the relationship with their caregiver or, or sorry, with their children, uh, it was uh, noticed. Uh, male caregivers were engaged in the session. It was challenging for us to, uh, to engage male challenges, uh, male uh, caregivers because of the culture here in Lebanon and in the MENA region especially that they consider that the women are the only one who are taking care of the children. But now, um, from more than four years, we are able to uh, engage the male uh, caregiver in these sessions. Next, please. Uh, I will uh, talk about some challenges and some main issues faced in Lebanon to see why it's important for us to have the curriculum and the FMD. Um, the increasing number of refugees with limited services, the deterioration of the economic situation in Lebanon, as you all, uh, all know, the lack of speciali specialized services, the lack of privacy in the household, and the poor parenting practices, increasing percentage of children with behavioral problems, and the more important thing is an increasing of percentage of child labor and violence. Next one. Uh, and to be able to uh, to be able to to respond to the challenges, we as IRC Lebanon, we we developed um, a, a curriculum for the children who are um, for the caregivers of the working children. And our lessons learned is ensure choosing uh, the well-trained facilitators and providing TOT for that parenting skills for that uh, for the facilitators. Include more budgeted activities for the parenting cycles and int introduce the service map and services hotline numbers have an MND and quality control staff attending the sessions and improving the quality and provide the caregivers with parenting catalog, including the main key messages and hotline numbers. Thank you. And over to the, if you have any questions. 
Thank you. First, I just want to thank you. And what I love with IRC is that you just make it sound like a fait accompli, something that IRC has been doing for years, these parenting programs. But in fact, it's still quite new around the world. And not only do you present it really well, but also um, it's really great to see how you've been scaling it up and how you're ready integrating the lessons learned. There was a question to me, but I think you can maybe answer it as well, about contextualizing the parenting programs. And especially, I guess, in a country like Lebanon, where you have Syrian refugees, Palestinian refugees, um, do you have to contextualize them by the different settings, by the different populations? And maybe if you yeah. can answer that, and I will answer it from my experience, and then we'll move on to you, uh, Isaac. Sure, sure. So for uh, for us as IRC Lebanon, we uh, for sure we adapt our curriculums uh, based on the nationalities, uh, depend on on uh, uh, on the context level. Uh, I will talk about what we did for the FMD twelve seventeen. For example, the the community did not accept at all what we we were. Uh, uh, giving to them, especially for the um, uh, for the sessions on adolescent, uh, for example, the sessions of uh, uh, giving uh, the ch the, their uh, um, uh, their children uh, adolescent uh, some uh, uh, tips on how to deal with the children and with adolescent. Uh, um, for example, and uh, the, the girl can have any uh, relationship with any man, but with uh, she should or he should be uh, protected. So we did a lot of adaptation here in Lebanon. Sorry, uh, in Lebanon to be able to uh, have it contextualized. Contextual Thank you. Thank you very much, Tagreed. And just from my experience, and then I'll hang over to Isang, and I'm sure Isang, you can also share your thoughts on this, but. I have uh, read more and more that the evidence says that as much as possible, if we can stick to the core components of a parenting program, it's better than reinventing the wheel. So there are some core components, which we just heard from Tagrid, and I'm sure Isang will actually mention the same. And as much as possible, sticking to those um, uh, where the evidence is, is very valuable. And then I think some smaller modules and adaptations need to be made. And I've seen this in different contexts, including Colombia, where I am now, and in the Philippines and um, Kenya and Tanzania, where actually every time you see the same core content, which is really valuable, it really makes it easier for us. I see there's a question from Marianne. Others, please feel free to put your hands up, but I'm gonna first hang over to Esang for a five minute presentation. And then people just put your hands up and put your videos on, and then we can go into some more questions. Over Thank to you, Esang. Thank you, Sabine. I'll be happy to talk about um, adaptations later, but I just want to dive into my presentation since I have just five minutes. Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Issa Nawa from the Parenting for Lifelong Health team and the Global Parenting Initiative at the University of Oxford. And I'll briefly share about the evidence-based parenting support for families affected by crisis that the Parenting for Lifelong Health team have developed in collaboration with UN agencies and other organizations. The next slide, please. We know that parenting programs address child behavior problems, child maltreatment and depression, but years ago, almost all the evidence we had was from the global north. So in 2011, through a collaboration between academics, international NGOs and community partners, the Parenting for Lifelong Health program, PLH for short, was developed. PLH is a suite of four parenting programs that have been tested in randomized trials and found to be effective in reducing violence against children, improving child and parental mental health, amongst other outcomes. And in 2020, when the COVID pandemic struck, we took evidence from the PLH programs and in collaboration with UNICEF, the WHO, other UN agencies and organizations, we developed resources to support parents and caregivers. These resources were translated into over 100 languages, shared in 198 countries, and have reached a staggering 210 million people so far. The next slide, please. The next slide. When the conflict began in Ukraine in February last year, we wanted to support families affected by the conflict. We know that armed conflict and other emergencies expose children to unthinkable forms of abuse. But we also know that parenting support could act as a buffer, limiting the impact of adverse circumstances. So once again, in collaboration with UN agencies and other partners, we used evidence from PLH and quickly developed and disseminated parenting resources. We developed tips to help parents cope, tips to support their children to cope, tips to address child trafficking, child sexual abuse, and so on. You can see samples on the slide here. 
The tip sheets were translated into different languages. And as the slide shows, we have the resources in other different formats too. We also made QR codes that people could use to access and download the tips from the website. Within the first two months, we reached over 11 million people. The next slide, please. One of our partners, World Without Orphans in Ukraine, used the tips to develop faith-based resources and also created hope groups. And on this slide, you can see feedback from one of the women in the hope groups. I'll just pause for about 30 seconds to allow you, maybe 10 seconds to allow you read the feedback. Okay, the next slide, please. Last year, when the devastating floods hit Pakistan, it was heartbreaking to see the impact, which included the loss of over 1,700 1, lives, 7.2 million people dis um, displaced. So with colleagues from Ked e Azam University in Pakistan, UN agencies and other organizations, we launched the Pakistan Parenting Response, which similar to previous responses, involved developing parenting resources to support parents and help them, parents and caregivers, and and help them to support their children. We started with tip sheets in English and the seven um, languages in Pakistan, but we quickly realized that we couldn't reach many families with this due to the low literacy level. So we developed TikTok videos, flip chats, and audio messages, which we shared with partners for further dissemination. We also held trainings for partner organizations, and the tips were also shared on the Pakistan national radio. So far, they have reached over 5.6 million people. The next slide, please. In February this year, when the, when the earthquake struck Turkey and Syria, we collaborated again with our partners to develop parenting resources. These were tip sheets which are available in Turkish, Arabic, and English. We have shared these resources with partner organizations and local NGOs for dissemination to families who need them, and dissemination is still ongoing. The next slide, please. Our latest Parenting in Crisis initiative began about two months ago and is a response to the conflict in Sudan. It is led by my lovely colleague, Faith Zurini, who is on the call. Again, this response involved collaborating with partners to develop and disseminate parenting resources. We have tip sheets and social media squares in Sudanese and English, and these have been shared with partner organizations and local NGOs for dissemination to families who need them. Dissemination, again, is still ongoing. I believe that the links to the different responses that I have mentioned, Ukraine, Pakistan, and so on, have been shared in the chat by my colleague, Faith. And my final slide, please. We are currently evaluating the responses in Ukraine and Pakistan because we want to know how we can better support families and what distribu distribution, distribution channels are most effective. Thank you for listening. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Asang. And again, like IRC, it's great to see the work that Parenting for Lifelong Health is doing. I just, before, um, I don't see any hands up. Um, Sarah Hommel, I think you're online. I was just put into the, I just put into the chat another great resources, which is the Safe, the Safe the Children's Safe Families program. It used to be called Parenting Without Violence. So maybe, um, Sarah, if you're online, you can say a couple of words about the Safe Families program. Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so um, as Sabine mentioned, uh, Save the Children used to have a program called Parenting Without Violence, and we recently updated this. This is a 2023 update. It's just starting to roll out now, and it's now called Safe Families. Um, it is a family support strategy that organizes um, parent and caregiver support sessions, as well as child support sessions, in parallel um, to cover content that um, that is intended to equip parents with knowledge, skills, and attitudes to transform uh, the way that they care for children, to empower children to feel valued, heard, respected, and safe within their family and community, to support communities to address harmful social and gender norms that often contribute to violence in the home, 
and to strengthen um, equitable and gender sensitive child protection systems. Um, and so in parallel, these child support sessions and parent and caregiver support sessions are supposed to improve knowledge, improve understanding of access to resources and supports, as well as um, personal strengths and assets um, to enable uh, a safer environment at home and in the community. And as Sabine mentioned, um, there is a link here in, in the chat, and that link is in the compendium of resources from, from the Family Strengthening um, Task Force, which will take you to a two-pager that provides more information, as well as contact information about how to receive um, more, more specific support and tools um, from this approach from Save the Children. Thanks. Thanks, Sarah. And maybe just a note, um, what I didn't realize it, the, the title of the program for Save the Children had changed from uh, Safe Families to Parenting Without Violence. And I really think it's essential um, that we frame this in a positive way, um, like Parenting for Lifelong Health does and um, Safe Families, because often parents won't attend parenting sessions if you say that it's around violence or it's about preventing violence or it's about uh, ending corporal punishment that's not how they're going to come to the sessions and that's not how we can retain them in the sessions. So it's actually nice to see that the agencies are all taking a much more positive shift. Yeah, it, in fact, it started as um, um, positive discipline and then it moved on to parenting without violence and then it, it emerged into safe families. So there's been a progression over several years that has landed Save the Children at this approach, which as you said, is intended to be more positive and supportive and enabling um, rather than um, rather than pointing out some uh, problems that that could exist in the community or in the home. Are there any questions? I see a room full of people under Hussein Brob. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember which country it is. I think in Iraq. Yeah, the Iraq hub. Do you have any questions from your side? Um, just recently with the Family Strengthening Task Force, we did a presentation for South Sudan, which was for their whole child protection coordination group, and there was 30 of them, and that was very interesting, and we stand ready to support you to do that. Nicholas, Millet, you have a question? Yeah, I would, um, I, I've been trying to find very specific resources. Sorry, my name is Nick, I'm, um, I'm at War Child um, UK, and the Global Health Advisor there. I've been trying to find specific resources for caregivers who are having, who are looking after children who have been associated with armed forces. So I think there's some specific vulnerabilities there, which often are not included in the um, general guidance um, and trainings out there. So I don't know if anyone has had any experience with specific um, packages that have been used and successfully used um, for children associated with armed groups. Thank you, Nick. That's a good question. Um, I personally am not aware. I know that WHO is working. It's not quite the same, but it has a wonderful toolkit and a training package for parents with children with disabilities. Um, it's, of course, not the same. Children that have been recruited are not don't have disabilities. But I, I found that actually very inspiring because it it helps. It really takes the perspective from the parent and how he or she as a parent has to take care of him or herself and then try to carefully address these other issues. And so it takes a parental mental health and the child's mental health perspective. But Isang, maybe you have, or other uh, colleagues from Tel Dezom or Plan or the in the Iraq hub, maybe you have uh, advice or resources? Um, at this time, no, we haven't worked on that specifically. No. Um, yeah, this is, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. This is Maria. No, just thinking that maybe there might be something into the, um, uh, in the um, MHPSS. I mean, there was a recent um, uh, guidance for MHPSS for children affected by um, armed conflict. So it could be that in that guidance, there are some recommendation regarding, you know, how to support parents to support children. Um, but I don't have that clearly in mind now, but I think this is something yeah, that you could um, look at. Thank you, uh, Maria. And Nick, if you have a chance, scroll up um, the, in the chat, there's a whole bunch of um, links. So there's the link to the compendium, but also a link to a, a systematic review. And if you can do, in, it's a long document, but if you could do a ser word search for armed conflict, maybe you'll find some, some resources in there. Um, and again, I, I 
there's some of these core components that are so essential. I, I think that we don't need to tailor everything for different groups because there's parents with children with adolescents and then children with disabilities and then a single household, the parents. And, 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 and actually we're seeing that more and more actually these parenting support groups work for all of them, quite a blanket intervention. Um, Eleonora and then Hekmatula. I mean, I see the participation hub in Iraq has their hand up first. Oh. Maybe we can go to oh, them and see, yeah. see if we can hear their question. Yeah. So Iraq hub and then Eleonora and then Hekmatula. Yeah, thanks. Okay, no, we can't hear you. Thank you, you so much. Uh, my question oh, there, yeah. is about uh, guidance. Um, I don't know if uh, we are in Iraq. We are in Iraq. Um, many of especially with the uh, global guidance uh, because some of them it's not uh, uh, specialized for the iraqi context uh, my question and my colleague question here in the iraqi hub uh, it's uh, i don't know if this guidance uh, uh, it, they have some of resilience to be uh, edited to be more uh, applicable with the iraqi context or or not the quick answer to that is absolutely yes. All the resources that you'll find are all open source. So basically you can go in and you can look at the IRC program or you can look at the Save the Children program and download, they have, or the, the Parenting for Lifelong Health one is on the World Health Organization website. It's the whole guide with what the eight to 10 sessions would look like um, for younger children, middle-aged children, and then adolescents. So you can really download it and make it applicable for your own context. And again, we stand ready to support you to do that. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, I see some. Yes, maybe more. it's clear. Thank you so much. I think there's been uh, some delayed uh, Arabic interpretation for the session, uh, Sabine. So apologies to the Iraq Hub for that. We'll try and troubleshoot for the next session. Thanks, Camilla. Eleonora? Hi, Sabine. Hi. I just wanted to reply to Nicola's question, and I see somebody put it in the chat that the IRC under the Alliance developed a curriculum for specifically for caregivers of uh, children who have been associated with armed forces and our groups. Mm. Um, so I think the link is in the chat, but I can also like put another link to another website. And it's a very comprehensive package. So the base and the main core manuals um, sorry core concept are there but there are some additional sections that have been added like for example there is a session on how to family uh, to plan the finances of the family or how to like share the responsibility with the children and they came from like a research that was done before developing the curriculum in uh, in some countries mm -hmm. that showed the, the unique needs of these children and so that has been trying to be addressed through this curriculum. Um, it has been piloted and tested in Nigeria, CAR and DRC. So it's available in French, Spanish, Arabic. Um, and now it has also been uh, implemented in other countries like Iraq, for example, um, and others. So well, I just wanted to mention this. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Eleonora. Um, I think it, it, it should be in the compendium. Um, so hopefully that responds to Nick's question and to the Iraq Hub's question. Maybe you can see that resource first and to see how you can use it and adapt it. Last question from Ekmatula, and then I'm going to hand back to Stacy to wrap up. Thank you, Sabine. So I will not take much of your time. Uh, I was wondering uh, why we did develop this uh, parenting response for Pakistan, Ukraine, and then the other country that you mentioned, but why, since uh, we have this situation, complex situation in Afghanistan, we, why we have not come to you know, develop this response, a parenting uh, uh, response for Afghanistan? That's my question, thank you. I know we can definitely adapt all the resources that are available, but uh, yeah, just wanted to heads up. Yeah, Ekmatula, maybe I'll try to answer that one and then see if my um, uh, my co-presenters have anything to add. But um, actually, I think parenting support is quite recent in terms of a, 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 a traditional response for the child protection sector. And so where the uh, child protection coordinators have requested it or where there was immediate donor support, that's where 
um, where the, the requests have come in. So all I can do is suggest to you that yeah. as part of your child protection coordination group, try to raise it just like South Sudan did three months ago. They raised it as an issue. We provided them with a two hour webinar where we went through the different tools and discussed with them what they could do. Um, and that's when they started coming together to put it on an agenda to develop a national parenting um, uh, guideline for, uh, for South Sudan. So um, we stand by ready to support, but I think the request has to come from Afghanistan. Um, does anybody want to add, Tagreed or Isang, do you want to add anything? And otherwise I will hand back to Stacy. Just to add also that from our point of view, it's always important for us to find local partners that we can collaborate with. So where we don't have, and then we're a small team, so that could also be a, a challenge in addition to what Sabine has said. But we are very much looking forward to supporting the people of Afghanistan. Thanks. Tagreed, or any of my co-chairs, Marianne and Sarah, anything to add? Nothing from my side, thank you. All right, thanks. Then back to you, Stacey. And um, as mentioned at the start, please don't hesitate to join the Family Strengthening uh, uh, Task Force um, so that we can continue updating the materials and sharing. Uh, was, this was already very useful in terms of sharing some of the tools. Over to you, Stacey.